So you probably noticed we didn't have a little celebrate thing uh, in your bulletin today. Um, that's because they don't have one of these for Ascension Day because Ascension happens on a Thursday, all right? And so we figured, let's not use it since we're not using those, those texts today. And in fact, we're probably not going to use this for the next 10 weeks because we're going to venture into the book of Acts and we're just going to work our way straight through the book of Acts. And so instead of using the texts that are in here and those kinds of things. So if you still like to have one of these, use it devotionally. There's a stack of them on the, on the table in, uh, in the entryway. And if you want to pick one up and use that, we have them, so you're welcome to make use of them, but we won't be using them on, on our Sunday morning. So today we start this journey through the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, I was telling the men of the Bible study, it really should be called uh, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. That's the, what the Holy Spirit is doing, working through our lives. It's a story of the creation of the church, how the disciples, the followers, became apostles. A disciple, someone who follows, apostle is someone who is sent. And we have this, this is the book of Acts is where that change happens. It's not a big book, only about 35 pages, depending on what translation you have, and it's pretty fast reading. It's got lots of great stories, and there are riots and jailbreaks and miracles and lynchings and visions and shipwrecks, and it moves right along. There's all kinds of stuff happening in the story. Uh, now, I have available for you a little guide book or a little pamphlet. It looks like this, and it's on the pedestal up at the back of the church there, and you if you want to pick one up. Um, it has a little guide for the next... Ten Sundays and ten Wednesdays, we're going to be breaking up the book of Acts into, into 20 pieces. And that way you can see what we're going to focus on each week. And if you miss a week, you can read, ahead, you can read through uh, and see what's there. Uh, and so it's got maps and things like that as well because it talks about lots of unfamiliar places. And to get a sense of geography of how far these places were, uh, sometimes maps are helpful for that. So go ahead and invite you, in fact, I encourage you to read ahead instead of uh, uh, what, what we're looking at for the particular day. And if you have questions as you're reading it, I'd love it if you would email me and say, Pastor, this sounds really weird. What is this? What's going on? I don't understand this part. That way it helps me, uh, my preaching, to address the questions you have with particular, uh, particular questions might be coming out of that. So pick up one of these on your way out there on, on the pedestal there. Uh, and read ahead for uh, next Wednesday or next uh, Sunday, the next time that you are with us in worship. All right, so the book of Acts is actually the second volume written by Luke. <coughs> volume one was called Luke, all right? Uh, uh, the Gospel of Luke, uh, and instead of Luke, volume two, he calls it the Acts of the Apostles. Luke ends his gospel, uh, the gospel of Luke, with the story of the ascension, and he begins volume two with the same story. Told slightly differently, but he ends with the same story. That becomes this, this what we celebrate today, the ascension, is this hinge between the gospels and the life of the church. So, last Thursday, I, this is my favorite ascension picture. That's, a, that's not cut off, that's the way it is. They just have Jesus' feet hanging out of the top of the picture there, all right? And the disciples uh, gathered, gathered underneath. Uh, where we celebrate 40 days after Easter, Jesus leaves the disciples and ascends up into heaven. Uh, it's not a big day because it happens in, in the middle of the week. Uh, it's it oftentimes not even recognized in the church. It would help if we rebranded it a little bit. Uh, ascension doesn't do much for me. I would, I would call it Left Behind Sunday. Because um, that's what it is. If you're looking for Left Behind in the Bible, this is where you're going to find it, all right? Uh, Jesus ascends, his followers are left behind. Um, now some people, we talked about a couple weeks ago, some people associate Left Behind with, as a bad thing. And if you missed that sermon, watch it on YouTube. Um, but the disciples being left behind was not a bad thing. It was a good thing because there was important work to be done. Jesus said, I'm coming back again, right? The same way you saw me leave, I'll, I'll be coming back. But until then, there's work to be done. I need you here on the ground. Be my hands, my feet in this place. We live in this in-between time, in-between Jesus leaving and coming again. That's, that's the setting for the book of Acts, the setting for our lives as well. So let's take a look at this. Um, now, volume two uh, like volume one, was written to someone called Theophilus, all right? Now, I'm not sure who Theophilus was. I don't even know if he was a real person. 
Uh, I think it's a way, Luke was saying, this is a story for us. Uh, Theophilus, if you break the word, Theo means God. Uh, Philus means lover. That's where we get Philadelphia, uh, city of love. All right, so Theophilus means someone who loves God. Now, that, might, that could be just his name, and we're lucky, or it might mean this is written for all those who love God. So let me read for you. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up into heaven, after giving instructions to the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days, speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you've heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it's not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took them out of his sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking toward heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way you saw him go. All right, that's our reading for today. All right, here's the question. Anyone ever here run a, a relay? Anyone ever in track run a, run a wheel? All right, so several of you got some experience with this. So what is the secret in passing on the baton? Anyone have some, some good advice for us? Anyone who's done this before passed the baton? Anyone know any secrets for that? Don't drop it. Don't drop it. All right. So you, you, you make sure there's contact. All right. You don't leave before you have it. All right. So important things that way. Timing is critical when you see this happen. You know, to say if you start running too fast, you get ahead of the other person. They can't catch you. Uh, if, you, if, you if you don't start fast enough, uh, you, you lose precious seconds in that. Timing is critical. Ascension is very much for us the passing of the baton. Jesus is passing the responsibility to be witnesses of all that they had seen and heard. That's a risky thing for Jesus to do. The baton could drop. If they're not ready to take it, Jesus is gone. He's not there anymore. He's passed the baton to them. A lot is at stake, and it still is. There's a time to wait, and there's a time to go. It's important to discern what that time is. Jesus says, first he says, wait. Don't, take off, don't start running yet. All right? Wait for the power. Wait for the spirit which is coming. And then, one, then run, Forrest, run, as soon as you, when you get it, all right? But if all we do is wait, if all we do is wait and never venture out, we'll never finish the race. If we take off running before we get the baton, we're running in vain. Right? Jesus said to the disciples, says, you will be my witnesses. The question is not whether or not you will be witnesses. He says, you will be witnesses. The question is, what kind of witness are you going to be? What makes someone a good witness? Um, someone who is observant. Someone who is articulate. Do you want someone who's creative? No, not necessarily, Right? Witnessing isn't, uh, witness doesn't create something. They don't make something up. They're not trying to convince someone of something. They're simply relaying on what they have seen and heard. All right, I'll give you an example of this. All right, the defense calls uh, Tom Peterson to the witness stand. Uh, please rise. Um, do you promise to uh, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Oh, yeah. All right, good. So... <laughs> So where were you on Sunday morning, May 1st, 2016? Sunday. Sunday. Last Sunday. Where were you last Sunday? You were here. Very good. All right. Thank you very much for your testimony. You may, all right, so. See, that's not hard. 
You simply, someone asks you where you were, what you saw, what you did, and you simply say, yeah, I I was there. I, I did that. What does it mean when Jesus says we will be witnesses? He's not saying you're going to be interrogated about your faith. Now, maybe some people will be. But most people are simply going to observe us, how we live, what we say, what we do. If we're authentic, do we love our neighbors as ourselves? Do we love God? If we do, it's going to somehow show in our lives. If we say one thing and do something else, it also will show. Both become a witness. When Jesus tells his disciples and tells us, you will be my witnesses, he's not calling us to do something special. He's calling us simply to live authentic lives. So when people look at us, uh, it will be something real and something that we can speak to. Um, If we do that, if we live the way that Jesus did, people are going to sense there's something different. They may not be able to put their finger on it. There's something about that person. There's something about what's going on there. They're not going to say, oh, I see you're very religious. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, no one ever accused Jesus of being religious. They accused him of being loving and caring, um, giving unselfishly of his time, of hanging out with losers, uh, of having a sense, being a, a peace and anxious time. And those kinds of things get noticed. And if someone asks, why, why do you live the way that you do? Uh, don't say, oh, it's nothing. Uh, your simple witness can say, just say, oh, it's a God thing. It doesn't have to be more than that. It doesn't have to be more complicated. You don't have to, you don't have to, uh, to, to give a whole long sermon on that. It's simply, you can say, well, well, how do you get that? Uh, your answer is, well, come and see. A bunch of us get together every Sunday, Wednesdays, and, and we, we support, we grow in this kind of thing. Our witness is simply, well, you don't have to be able to explain it. You simply say, well, come and experience it with me. Faith uh, development is not really our business. That's the work of the Spirit. But we can do the inviting. We can do the come and see. Now, are we going to be perfect witnesses? No, not a chance. Uh, Will that surprise Jesus? No, not at all. Uh, Two minutes before he ascends... The disciples are still asking him goofy questions. <laughs> like, is, is this, now, is this when the kingdom's coming? You know, and Jesus probably does a head plant. And he says, all right, I'm out of here. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, they're, they're asking dumb questions right up to the minute he's, right, right before he leaves. They're still asking like they don't, they don't get it. So good thing the Holy Spirit was coming. That's why he said, wait, don't say anything to anyone until the Holy Spirit comes. All right. Jesus leaves us this precious gift of the gospel. It is good news. And and hands it to us with a spirit to guide and lead us. Now I imagine the uh, the ascension was a tough day for the disciples. A lot of change, and that's an understatement, was going on in their lives. They had left everything to follow Jesus, and now Jesus is taken from them. First in the, in the res- uh, with his death on the, on the cross, uh, and then they have this good news of the resurrection, but now he's leaving until who knows when. He doesn't give them a date when he's coming back. Change, even good change, is hard. And take some readjusting to get used to it. And for our lives, change uh, is, is, is part of life. Uh, It's accelerating. I think of how my life changed uh, from my grandparents to to me, and that's going to be nothing compared to how the change between me and my grandkids and how they are living. But in the midst of all this change, uh, and it's been going on, it's nothing new, every generation has experienced that, is this promise of the Father, of the Holy Spirit, the assurance that we are not alone. Right? That's the gospel. We have been passed a baton, right? And now it's time to grab it and run. We don't have to worry where, where it's all going to end. There's lots of people running with us. We won't get lost. But we do need to get moving. Um, uh, there's some inertia that happens. If we don't start moving, it's hard to get going. Well, next week we are going to continue reading in the, in the book of Acts uh, where this promised spirit comes. Um, 
Uh, it's a day which, which we call Pentecost. Uh, and I invite you to come, have someone come with you. It's not hard. Simply say, we've got cool things going on at Joy. You should come and see. Uh, you don't have to ask them to join the church or accept Jesus. Just say, come and see. Uh, and let the Spirit do its thing. Amen. Let's... Uh,